This bike is absolutely awesome and there are many things I like about it, but there's one thing I'd change if I could. Recently at a local sportive, I got chatting to one of my subscribers, Chris, who was riding the event on a specialised e-road bike so he could keep up with his brothers who were also doing the ride with him. And I think that is a fantastic reason to have an e-bike. However, I said in that video that I didn't really get the hate online that e-bike owners get because what anyone else rides shouldn't really be the concern of anyone else. Truth be told though, I've never really owned or even really ridden an e-bike myself. So I don't suppose I really have any skin in the game. Until now that is. Because Engway have just sent me one of their E26 models to have a play with. And I have to say, I am pretty excited about getting to grips with this thing. But first, I need to get it out of the box and build it, which could prove a little more difficult than I would like. Now, I say that because Engway say that this thing weighs in at 34.5 kilos or 76 pounds. As you might imagine then, that makes it fairly weighty. Oh, come on. And there it is. This thing is an absolute beast. So yeah, 34 and a half kilos. And before one of my regular viewers, Sam, gets the heckle in, yes, that is a lot heavier than my 13 kilo gravel bike. However, this isn't just an ordinary e-bike. It is a fat tire e-bike with these huge four inch wide tires, which also means that the tires are much heavier. It has much wider and bigger rims. And because of that, it has to have a much bigger and beefier battery. All of that added together comes up to quite a weight. Considering how much bike you're getting here then, that weight isn't too bad. It does come nicely packaged and protected though, as you can see. So let's get all of this padding off and get the thing built. So in the box, you get your pedals, you get a few tools, the instruction manual with a couple of zip ties, the cutest little bell that I've ever seen. I like that a lot. And a battery charger with a UK plug, which is nice. Right, well, if you can say nothing else about this bike, it does come very well protected. <laughs> oh, and as well as all the other parts you get, you of course get the battery as well, which you can charge using the charging port down here, but equally it can be taken out of the bike and charged standalone as well. Now, talking of the battery, Engway say that the E26 takes five and a half to six hours to fully charge. So if you've got a ride planned in the morning, it will easily charge up overnight, no problems. So while I'm building this thing up, let me give you a few of the specs. And straight off the bat, I'll give you the price, which is 1,399 pounds in the UK, or 1,399 euros in Europe, because they are basically the same thing these days. In America though, this is $1,499. Although at the time of recording this video, the US site does list this uh, as being discounted down to $1,099. And even better than that, if you use the code that I've left in the description below that Engway have given me, that will give you an extra 100 pounds, euros or dollars, depending on where you're buying this thing, off of the price. So if you're buying this in America at the moment, you could get this for under $1,000, which I think it's an absolutely incredible price. But anyway, back to the bike. The frame is made of 6061 aluminium, which is basically what all alloy bikes are made of these days. And going back to the wheels for a second, they are 26 inch rims. But with these four inch wide tires though, it does bring the overall diameter out to the more standard 29 inch or 700C diameter. Right, let's get the handlebars on. Now, while we're up the front here, I should say, although it's only a very minor thing, I do really like these curly-whirly cable tidies they're using. Again, it's purely aesthetic, but there are obviously a lot of cables involved in keeping an e-bike running. So it's just nice that they've had a little bit of thought about keeping the cockpit nice and tidy up the front here. Oh, 
And you've also got an adjustable stem up at the front here, so you can change the height of your stem without having to mess around with the height of the stem on the steerer. And it also comes with fully metal mud guards, and they are sturdy beasts. So hopefully they'll do a good job of keeping you clean and dry. The front mud guard goes on easily enough using just a simple nut and bolt at the front at the top of the suspension fork arch. Not forgetting that the front light screws on using the same nut and bolt as well. And then once that bolt's done up at the front, just another couple of screws to attach the stays to the fork. Right, well that is the light secured on, and I'll be interested to see just how bright that is when I test it later. Now similarly, at the back with the rear mudguard, this just connects with a couple of screws at the back that connect into the top of the rear dropouts. Now, to put the front wheel on this thing, Engway recommends turning the bike upside down. However, this bike has hydraulic brakes, and I'm always a little bit reluctant to do that because if there are even the most minute air bubbles in the hoses, in the hydraulic lines, then it can cause problems for braking later on. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna struggle and try and lift this bike up while putting this massive four inch wide rim in. First of all, I need to take out the bar that they've put in to space the fork apart to stop the fork getting damaged in transit. And then I need to take out the little plug from the brake caliper that stops the pistons going in while it's in transit. So I'm gonna do that. And then you're gonna watch me struggle to lift the bike up and get the wheel in at the same time. This will be a laugh. Right, here we go, wish me luck. Well, there you go. That wasn't as difficult as I anywhere near expected it to be. And I even managed to get the brake disc rotor in the caliper as a bonus. Right, and now we've got that front wheel on, you can see the sheer enormity of this thing. I mean, I've not even put the saddle up yet, but this is a big old beast of a bike. Right, and so the next thing I'm gonna put on because of that, and because I don't want it to fall over, is the kickstand. Okay, that is easily put in with a couple of bolts and hopefully the bike shouldn't be going anywhere now. On to the pedals. Now, remember that pedals are polarity conscious. They do have a right and a left side, but helpfully these ones have got right and left written on the spindles. So they tell you exactly where they should go. But always remember that pedals screw in, generally speaking, towards the front of the bike. So the one on the non-drive side, when you're screwing it in, it will feel like you're actually unscrewing it. But because it has a left-hand thread, you will actually be putting it in the right way. Right, I think we're nearly there. And one of the last things to go on is the rear rack. And I actually really like this. It is chunky as hell, just like the rest of the bike. And Engway say that this has a 25 kilo weight limit. I'm gonna test that out later because I feel that for the size of it, it's gonna have a much higher payload capacity than that. So I might just try and sit one of my kids or even my wife on it, just to give it a go, see how much it can really take. Right, so that is the rear rack on. And actually, as well as the rear rack, you can buy separately a front basket rack sort of thing that goes on the front of the bike to give even more storage space. So while it's not quite a cargo bike, it does give you quite a big level of storage space for things like shopping and commuting. So I'm pretty impressed with the level of storage on this. But as well as the light at the back, the last thing we need to do is put the rear light on at the back. And what's quite cool about that rear light is that it actually doubles up as a brake light as well. So whenever the rear brake is pulled, the rear brake light goes on. Just a little thing, but I think that is pretty cool. But otherwise, that is the bike pretty much built. And I have to say, that wasn't particularly taxing at all. I think even the most non-mechanically minded person could actually have a go at putting that together. And the tools that they supply, although they are fairly basic and you can see that they're quite cheap, they actually do the job pretty well. The only time I used any of my own tools was for uh, the front cap of the stem here, where I used my torque wrench and on the pinch bolts on the side of the steerer, on the side of the stem, sorry, um, just to make sure that that is all done up to spec. But otherwise, I used all of the little hex keys and the spanners uh, that they sent along. 
and yeah they work pretty well and the manual to put it together was actually not too bad to understand i know sometimes chinese english there's a little bit of a translation barrier but the manual wasn't too bad but even better than that is the video that's on engway's website uh, they've got full videos for the builds of all of their bikes and that was actually very very straightforward and very easy to understand so now that this thing is built let's take you through a few of the features so first up it does have front suspension which is lockable uh, and I've no idea how much travel the fork has um, because I can't find it anywhere on Engway's website but it looks to be around I don't know 75 to 80 mil but we will test that out later now it doesn't have rear suspension but it does have one of these suspension seat posts now I've got one of these on my current gravel bike and I'm going to say that I am a big fan of these they are really good at taking out the sting of the nastier bumps on the road without you having to suffer any of that uh, power loss that you get when you have a full suspension bike when you're trying to put the power down and the bike flexes uh, can make it feel just a little bit spongy so I'm fairly happy with the seat post on this. Um, moving on to the battery itself this thing has a 48 volt 16 amp hour power source which Engway say will give you a range of up to a huge 140 kilometers or 86 miles. Now that distance will obviously be in the lowest pedal assist setting which sees you doing more of the legwork but even so 140 kilometers is an incredible distance and I will be putting that to the test later in this video. In terms of the motor uh, it is a rear hub style drive so the motor is in the back wheel here which means it has a speed sensor style method of motor kicking that's opposed to a mid-drive powered motor uh, which would have a torque sensor where the motor sits around the bottom bracket area of the bike and detects how much pressure you're putting through the cranks uh, and then gives you power as much power as you need dependent on that. With the rear hub speed sensor though, the motor doesn't kick in until the wheels have been spinning for a couple of seconds. Now, I'm not sure how well that will work in practice. And my concern is that hill starts on this thing because it is quite heavy might be a bit of an issue, but we'll find out later again when I take this thing out for a test ride. If you do need to change the rear wheel for any reason though, to change the tire or to fix a puncher, there is a very handy quick release connector in the wiring so you don't have to worry about any complicated motor wiring uh, when taking the wheel on and off. So that is fairly good. Now it is running a one by seven gear setup with an entry level Tournay rear derailleur at the back. And it uses a 48 tooth chain ring at the front and an 11 to 28 cassette at the back. To be honest, the cassette and chain ring matched with the motor on this thing means that you'll be flying up everything but the most severe hills uh, on this thing. So I don't think you're gonna have too many problems with it. Talking of speed though, due to current UK regulations, the Engway E26 comes locked at a max pedal assist speed of 15.5 miles an hour. If you go any faster than that, the motor drops out and then it's all you doing the grunt work with your legs until the speed comes back down and then the motor kicks back in. That said, you can unlock this in the settings to allow you to travel up to around 28 miles an hour. Doing that would make the bike completely illegal for road use in the UK though, and you could only then use it on private land with the landowner's permission. So if you are going to use that on a public road, if you're gonna disable that, de-restrict it and use it on a public road, I do need to tell you that that is illegal and I wouldn't recommend it. However, it is nice to know that there is a way to de-restrict the speed though. As I mentioned earlier, this does have hydraulic brakes and it runs 180 mil rotors, both front and back, which is good to see for a bike as heavy as this. I'll be interested to see just how well they stop the bike later on. Uh, and again, I'll be giving that a full test. It does come in a few different colors and this is what Engway call gem blue but it is effectively a turquoise color uh, which I really like actually it's not quite Bianchi Celeste but it's not far off so that is pretty cool it does also come in a galaxy gray and a bumblebee yellow so if you're into astronomy or transformers then there are a couple of colors for you too and it also comes in a step through version where you effectively get rid of this top tube that does bring the weight down a little bit ever so slightly as well. Now finally, it 
it has this large LCD screen at the front here that shows you uh, the speed that you're currently traveling at and how far you've traveled. I have to say it's pretty visible even in this bright sunlight that I'm in at the moment so that's pretty handy and as I mentioned earlier it also comes with a bell which I haven't actually fitted yet but it is the coolest cutest little bell I've ever seen and it is actually very loud as well and it rings for quite a while. Now I'm not generally a big fan of bells, but this one is pretty cool as far as bells go. So I suppose I should get it on the bike. Right, well with the bell put on, I think I've talked about this thing for quite long enough. So I think it's time for a test ride, but I do want to give it an official weigh in first. So let's see if I can even lift this thing. Uh, uh. Right, try that again. The weight didn't even want to settle because <laughs> I was shaking so much. All right, let's try one more time. Okay, right, but that's not settling simply because my arms are shaking too much lifting it up, but it does come in at just over 34 kilos. So anyway, I'll pretty much spot on the money with what they say in the manual. So with all that done, let's get this 34 and a half kilo absolute behemoth out on the road. Okay, so we're out with a fully charged battery and the battery took just over five hours to charge. So it'll be interesting to see just what sort of mileage range I get out of a full charge. But actually before I start using the battery at all, I wanna see what this bike's like with no pedal assist. So I'm gonna take it up a hill close to me to see how difficult an uphill start with no pedal assist is. Okay, so this hill tops out at about 9.5% at its steepest. And the first thing that strikes me is that this bike isn't as difficult to move without pedal assist as I expected. Now, don't get me wrong, it is no super light carbon fiber road bike. And I did have to stand up to get the bike up the hill at the steepest point. But handling this thing at low speed isn't anywhere near as difficult as I'd expected, especially with those big four inch knobbly tires. That said, someone of a slightly lighter disposition might struggle a bit more than me. I weigh around about 85 kilos, which is quite a bit of weight to push down through the pedals to get set off. So for me, setting off and throwing my full weight down onto the pedals makes it a little bit easier. Someone with a little less ballast than me, shall we say, might struggle to get it started up the hill. On the flat though, considering the weight of this thing, it's not as difficult to keep it rolling, again, as I expected it to be. I mean, you can definitely feel quite a bit of rolling resistance from those big knobbly tires but actually it's not too difficult at all okay so that's the non pedal assist side of things dealt with but let's be honest you're not buying this bike to not use the electric motor so let's turn pedal assist on and see how we get on with a hill start sadly that does mean going back down to the bottom of that hill that i just struggled up Okay, so we're back at the bottom of this hill and I've now put the pedal assist setting on and I've ramped it up straight to level five, which is currently the top level. I say currently because you can go into the settings and change uh, the levels around a bit. So you can have up to nine levels from zero to nine levels. Now that doesn't change the maximum power output you get from this bike, but it just narrows the gaps between the bands and when the motor cuts off. Honestly though, I don't see any need really to change that from the current five levels. So I've strapped that down as default and I'm gonna stick to that for now. Right, so I am in first gear on the rear cassette and I am at power level five. So let's see how much easier it is to get up this hill now than it was without any pedal assist. Okay, so as expected, it did take a couple of seconds for the wheels turning before the motor kicked in. But when the motor did kick in, wow, it was a sudden huge boost of acceleration. So I have to say, although it is a rear hub drive, wow, it has got some kick to it. So yeah, pretty happy with the take up and acceleration of this thing. It is immense. Going back to that motor kick in time with the speed sensor on the rear hub though, that isn't a problem specific to the Engwe E26. That is all rear hub motors. They will all take at least a couple of seconds before they sense movement, before they then kick in. As I say though, in first gear, it wasn't actually too difficult to get it started. So that's a bonus.
good to see those huge metal mud guards doing their job there. Not a drop of water on me. So yeah, you do get quite a huge boost of acceleration from this thing in Power Assist setting five, which let's be honest, you're gonna strap it down into and never move if you buy this thing. Who's gonna choose a lower power setting? Right, another hill. Not quite as steep this time, but let's see how quickly I can get on this one. Well, that absolutely flew up there. Right, I've done about 10 miles on this thing now and I've just lost my first bar of battery, which bodes pretty well. 10 miles, one bar of battery, and I've spent most of that in power assist level five. So actually that's pretty good going. If all five of those bars take 10 miles to go down, 50 miles, I think that is pretty good. But I thought I'd take a quick stop just to have a quick chat with you about the other power assist settings. Now, as I say, as default, there are five. And the difference between those five levels is how quickly the motor cuts off. So respectively speaking, levels one to five cut the motor out at four, six, eight, 12 and 15 and a half miles an hour and as i mentioned earlier 15 and a half miles an hour is the current legal limit in the uk however having played around with speed in various settings i have to say that anything really below level four is quite slow and probably you're not going to end up using it that said it is at power level one that will push you along at about four miles an hour but anyway state you will get the full 140 kilometer range on this thing so it is technically possible to get 140 kilometers out of it, but you'd have to be doing it at four miles an hour. And let's be honest, none of us are doing that. Moving on to the brakes though, as I said earlier, this thing does have 180 millimeter disc rotors uh, with hydraulic calipers, which is pretty good for a bike of this price, an electric bike of this price nonetheless. The calipers are a generic no-name brand. I've absolutely no idea where they're from, but I have to say they do work pretty well. Uh, I was flying down a hill earlier at about 20 miles an hour, grabbed a handful of brake and they stopped pretty quickly. My only slight gripe with the brakes is that they come set up in the European standards. That is to say that the front brake is on the left as opposed to it being on the right, which is more standard here in the UK. I've no idea why that is, why they're set up in two different ways, but I think America also has the same setup as Europe. Although I think Australia doesn't. I think Australia uses the front brake on the right. It has something to do with which side of the road you drive on in your country, so it doesn't really uh, come as that much of a surprise that Australia, who drive on the left, the same as us over here, have the same brake setup. As I say, I have no idea what it's about, but I have previously heard that it's something to do with being able to turn through traffic while still being able to grab your dominant brake on the right. How true that is, I've no idea. As I say, it's only a small gripe. Uh, it did cause me a bit of an issue earlier when I was coming flying down that hill and I grabbed a fistful of right brake lever, thinking that that was going to engage the front brake. No, I locked up at the back and nearly slid out. Luckily, that didn't happen but it did send the old heart rate pulsing a little bit. As for the suspension, it is actually really comfortable. The fork at the front does a really good job of soaking up the biggest potholes and bumps on the road. And the suspension seat post is really smooth and comfortable as well. So I really don't think you can grumble about there being no full rear suspension on this thing because ultimately, this is a large fat tire e-bike. It is not an e-mountain bike that you're gonna start throwing off jumps and going down gullies and berms with. So you're not really gonna need that full suspension anyway. The geometry is also really nice on this bike as well. Now, as I've said before, it is a huge bike, but you do find yourself being sat quite upright on it. It's not aero in the slightest, but then you don't need it to be. It's an e-bike. You're not buying this thing to go racing on it, so you don't need to get down into that super tuck position at all. So what I would say is stick that stem up as far as you can, sit yourself in a nice comfortable position and go for a very nice ride on it. 
Now, another thing about the geometry of this thing, and it's probably to do with the height of those tires, but to put your leg in the optimal position for pedal stroke, for me at least, it does put me quite high on the bike. If I put the saddle up really high, then I am sat quite tall. And when I come to a stop, that means that I am really struggling on my tiptoes to keep the bike upright. I'm six foot one or 185 centimeters with an 80 centimeter inseam. So I'm already fairly tall and sitting on this seat as high as I need it for optimum pedal stroke does leave me feeling a little bit like a high wire acrobat. However, that said, you don't really need to be sat that high or worry about pedal stroke too much because again, it's an e-bike and you've got that motor assisting you. So even if your leg isn't athletically bent at the bottom part of the pedal stroke, it doesn't really matter. So you could drop the seat post quite a bit and not have to worry about your power output. On the point of the saddle, it is a nice wide padded affair and it looks as if it should be pretty comfortable. However, after riding it for just 10 miles now, I have to say that it has become a little bit uncomfortable. Um, the back of it is just a little bit too wide and it keeps rubbing on the back of my thighs as I'm pedaling, so that is a little bit inconvenient. I wouldn't say I'd swap it out for a razor thin road bike style saddle, but you might want to get something a little bit thinner uh, with maybe just as much padding on it, but something that doesn't rub the inside of your thighs as you're riding. Right, well, I think that's enough talking for now. I'm going to head back off and do a few more miles on this thing to really test the range of this battery. Let's have it. Let's see if this thing is just as capable off-road as it is on-road. Okay, well I chose absolutely the wrong path to try this on because um, yeah, I just had to put my foot down as the front wheel slipped through a massive mud tank slapper. Um, yeah, take a look at this. And to be honest, the rest of this trail looks much the same as the three massive bits of mud I've just come through. So I think I might turn around and find a slightly less boggy trail. <sighs> okay, so this off-road is a bit more like it. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, the bike handled that mud pretty well. Unfortunately, I'm just not in the best attire for it. If I was in some boots and a bit more waterproof clothing, rather than a pair of jean shorts and my best Adidas trainers, I might have gone a bit further in, but um, yeah, let's get some drier off-road, shall we? This is much more like it. Right, well, it's on terrain like this, which isn't the bumpiest, I have to be honest, but there are quite a few, you can probably hear from my voice right now, divots, lumps and bumps all over it. But this front fork, yeah, that's dealing with it admirably. And my backside, it's not feeling it at all. The saddle, unfortunately, is still rubbing on the backs of my thighs, but my peach itself, top notch. Okay, well I have to say, as much as I am a die-hard roadie, taking this thing off-road was probably even more fun than riding it on the road. Okay, well that's most of the features of this bike tested as I wanted to, but there's one more thing I need to test, and that is the top speed in de-restricted mode. But for that, I need to go somewhere else. Okay, so slight change of scenery here because I am currently in the paddock field at the back of my friend's house. So I am currently on private land with the owner's permission. So I can fully open the taps on this thing, I can de-restrict the speed and I can enable the use of the throttle. So let me show you how to do that first. Okay, so to de-restrict the speed on this bike, what we first need to do is press and hold both the plus and minus pedal assist buttons over here. And if you hold them for a couple of seconds, it will get you into the super secret menu. You then press the plus button until you get up to menu six. And as you can see down the bottom there, it's currently set at 25 kilometers per hour max speed. To change that, you simply press the top button on the side of the pedal assist selector, and then the 25 down the bottom starts flashing, and then you press the plus button until it gets all the way up to 63. 
Once that's done, press the top button at the side again just to confirm it and then you can press and hold the power button to turn the bike off and then we can confirm that that de-restricted speed is in by turning the bike back on, waiting for the screen to load up and then we'll go back into the menu again by pressing and holding the plus and minus buttons and then press plus until we get to menu 6 and then you can see there that that is still set at 63 kilometers per hour. So now we've de-restricted the speed, we still have no use of the throttle over here. So to enable the throttle, we turn the bike back off and then we pull the throttle back and pull the brake lever while switching the bike on again. Wait for the bike to go through its setup function and eventually you'll come up to this screen that flashes 25 and error. Now we've still got the throttle held and the brake pulled on. After about 10 seconds or so, you can release that. And then when you select any pedal assist setting, we will take the bike off the side stand, you pull the throttle and it moves. Right, so now we have enabled the use of the throttle and fully opened the taps on the speed. Let's see what this thing can really do. Right, let's have it. Yeah. Right, so first off, let's try out pure pedal power in pedal assist setting five to see how fast we can go before we use the throttle. Say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong. I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost. I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south. I'll be spreading out, call it word of mouth, can't put me down. I'll be getting loud, you can never doubt, not what I'm about. Have your f***ing cloud, it be raining now. Whew. Right, well, I got that up to just under 30 miles an hour. I think it was like 29 point seven or something like that and i did think that i would be able to get a close-up video of that but to be quite honest over this bumpy grassy ground it was all i could do to hold on to the handlebars so you'll have to take it from me that it was just under 30 miles an hour so that was pure pedal power now let's see what the throttle can do i don't think it's going to be quite as fast but when you're not pedaling do you really care right throttle here we go Okay, so we're on pedal assist five, but that doesn't actually matter when you're using the throttle only. You can be in any pedal assist setting and the throttle will work just as fast. So, no pedaling, hit the throttle, let's go. Cause I just want to hear it out your mouth, yeah Okay, well, pure throttle speed I got up to about 17 miles an hour Before I hit the end of the field And uh, had to jump on the brakes quick smart So, 17 miles an hour Not quite as fast as pedalling alone But, 17, that's no slouch speed Right, there's just over 35 miles done And I've just gone down to the last bar of battery So, I've probably got another 5 or 10 miles out of this thing Let's get back and have another little chat about the pros and cons of this thing. Okay, so what are the positives and negatives of this bike? Well, first of all, we've got those fat knobbly tires, which are great for grip off-road, but they also help with the bumps on the road. Match that with the front suspension and the suspension seat post, and this is actually a really comfortable ride. Now, on the suspension seat post, I know some people will have preferred a full SUS system, but in reality, as I mentioned earlier, you're not sending this off huge gnarly jumps. So you don't really need 150 millimeters of travel to cushion your landing. For day-to-day -day rides and commuting across some uneven ground, some potholed roads, this seat post is more than adequate. In terms of storage space, there's loads of space to carry stuff on the rear rack and you can get a front basket for extra space. Then we have the acceleration and speed. Now, as I showed earlier on in the video, this thing takes a little while to get going. And when I say takes a while, it takes a couple of seconds to get going. But then once it does, you get a huge boost of acceleration. And that is quite exhilarating when you first start riding this thing. It then goes up to a top speed de-restricted of 30 miles-ish, thereabouts. Downhill, you are gonna get it going a lot faster than that. Again, on the road, because of current UK legislation, you are restricted to 15.5 miles an hour on this thing. Now, personally, I think that's a silly law, especially considering that you can go pretty much any speed on this, like any other bike, if you're going downhill, and if you can pedal it fast enough once the motor has dropped out. So why restrict the motor just to 15 and a half miles an hour, I don't know. But anyway, that's the situation that we are currently stuck with. The gears work really well. The seven speed thumb shifter up the front is okay. It can be a little bit clunky at times, but it gets the job done. I think I'd have preferred a trigger style shifter, but 
again, it works well and isn't going to cause you any problems. And that 11 to 28 cassette on the back is going to see you getting up most hills, especially when matched with the motor in this thing. The brakes I really like, those 180 millimeter disc rotors with the hydraulic calipers work really, really well. As I say, they nearly took me off the bike earlier when I decided to grab onto what I realized later was the rear brake. But having ridden this thing for about a week now, I've had no concerns about the brakes stopping me on any terrain. So very happy with how they're working. And finally, although it is a bit of a beast and it is a big old bike, I just really like the look of it. It is a beautiful looking thing. I really like this color. As I mentioned earlier, it's not quite Bianchi Celeste, but it's quite close. And that's a color that I really, really like. So this, the Galaxy Gray and the Bumblebee Yellow, I think are just perfect. And it is a beautiful looking bike. And finally, the brake light at the back. Now, again, it might just be a little bit of a gimmick, but I really, really like it. I think it is a nice little touch. And with interactions between car drivers and bikes becoming all more present these days, having something extra at the back that could potentially show a car behind you that you're slowing down can only be a good thing. And then you match that with the light at the front, which is extremely bright. I brought this out last night and tried it out in my garden and it pretty much lit up the whole garden. So yeah, top marks for the light as well. So on to the negatives and there's only a couple and the first one is only a slight problem and I've already listed it as a positive so it's going to sound a little bit strange to have in the negative list too but it's this tyre size as grippy and shock reducing as they are you do get a lot of rolling resistance to them due to how wide and knobbly they are and it is actually quite loud as you're riding along. <laughs> However, it's an e-bike, so that's only really gonna become an issue if you ever let the battery run down and you're using pure leg power to get it home. When you have the power switched on with this thing though, it's not an issue at all. But the big negative for me is that speed sensor and how long it takes the motor to kick in. As I said earlier though, that's not a problem with this bike alone, as all rear drive e-bikes suffer the same issue. If you're starting uphill in the wrong gear, it can be a struggle to get going. So you do really need to think about coming to a stop if you're on an uphill or or any flat ground to bring the gearing down so you can set off. There is the option of initializing the throttle, which you can then use to just get yourself going and then start pedaling. But as I said before, throttle use in the UK is illegal. So you use that at your own risk. So in conclusion, what do I think of this bike? Well, look, I've made no secret in the past of the fact that I have absolutely no issue with e-bikes. And so maybe this review might have been a little less biased if it was done by an e-bike skeptic. Because after riding this thing for a while, I honestly think that anyone who doesn't like e-bikes hasn't ridden an e-bike before. And I say that because even though I would say I don't need the pedal assistance that an e-bike gives you, this has been a hell of a lot of fun to ride. In fact, I've now had this bike for a couple of weeks and have used it on a few shorter journeys where I might have ordinarily taken the car. Now, granted, I could have done those journeys on a normal bike as well, but if I had, I would have arrived at my destination out of breath and quite sweaty as well, which is not comfortable when you're wearing everyday clothes like these. So using the e-bike got me there comfortably and saved just a little bit more CO2 from being pumped into the air by the car. So will I be taking part in sport eves with Everest levels of climbing on this bike? Well, as much as I might appreciate that help on a ride like that at the time, no, I won't, because to me, those sorts of events are about the struggle and the spirit to persevere and endure. Will I now consider continuing to use this to do short journeys I would have previously done in my car though? Absolutely. In fact, I've already ordered the rear rack for this thing uh, that Engway sells and the basket that goes on the front that I mentioned earlier, so I can take it to do the weekly food shop in the next town over from me. And I've already, as you can see, put a seat on the rear rack here so I can take one of my kids with me on it wherever I go. As I mentioned earlier, the rack has a stated weight limit of 25 kilos, but my 11 year old son weighs just over 40 kilos and there have been no issues whatsoever with taking him on the back on rides on this thing. As well as shopping and transporting kids though, this bike would be perfect for commuting if you don't want to arrive at work in a sweaty heap. And as I've said before, this would also be great for anyone who's less able to pedal a standard bike due to an injury or ill health. But to be honest, as I mentioned at the top of this video, you don't need any reason to ride one of these. And as far as I'm concerned, you can ride whatever you like 
for any reason you like. I have to say then that this Engway E26 is not only a very functional bike, but actually what's taken me by surprise is just how much fun I found it too. Obviously, I love cycling and I love getting out on bikes in whatever form they take anyway, but actually I found myself trying to find excuses just to get out on this bike as I just want to keep riding it. It's definitely not going to replace my carbon fiber road bike, but there's definitely space for it in my bike lineup. And you know what they say, N plus one. But as ever, I'm keen to know your thoughts though. Would a huge, fun, fat tire bike like this make you any more likely to buy an e-bike? Could you see yourself maybe not completely abandoning your car, but at least replacing a few journeys with something like this? Always interesting to hear your thoughts, both for and against, so leave me a comment below. Right, with all that said, I am going to take the battery out and go and get this thing recharged fully so I can go out and enjoy a lot more fun miles in it. So I'm going to end the video here and I will say thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I will see you in the next one. Take care.